Texas Small Farmers and Ranchers CBO. All right. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for tonight's uh, Knowledge Forum. We have a very special guest uh, with us tonight, and he has some great info to share. Um, but for, uh, first, before we um, get to Mr. Uri Israel, we want to do some quick housekeeping items. Uh, if it's your first time here, uh, we typically go anywhere from 60 but no longer than really 90 minutes or so um, in respect for your time. Uh, I know it's evening. Some of you still need to grab a bite to eat and all that good stuff. So if you haven't already done so, feel free to do so and uh, bring it back and, and we're going to get to it. Um, today's format will be interview style. So uh, for the first 30 to 45 minutes, uh, we'll be doing some uh, round robin questions. Uh, uh, both Uche and Arla Arlena here will be uh, joining me with uh, chiming in on some of those questions. Uh, we do encourage you during that time to use the Q&A uh, section to type in any questions during that segment. And then we're going to um, open things up to the audience uh, to make sure that you have the opportunity to ask any questions you may have for Uriah at that time. So you can do one of two things at that time is either um, continue to type in the, the Q&A chat or just simply raise your hand. So uh, we'll remind, remind you again once we get to that point. And uh, then at the tail end, after everything's finished up, we'll have some closing comments and then uh, we'll see y'all next time. But uh, let's get the ball rolling. I wanna go ahead and get it started by handing it off to you, Uche, and see if we can get an icebreaker. Yes. Thank you, Phil. Welcome, everyone. We're so excited to have you guys. Um, we're going to start off with some icebreaker questions. So we want to get to know everyone that is going to be participating with us today and learning from Raya and all our wonderful uh, and what everything he'll be sharing today. So I'm going to launch this and let me know if you can see the polls. Uh, right now, the poll questions are open. And the first question is very simple. Uh, where are you joining us from? Feel free to answer it. Uh, just type in in, in in the questionnaire, like, you know, where you're joining us from, uh, where you are. I see uh, one person has already answered. Thank you so much. Uh, see a few people. And we have another question as well. Um, do you grow your own food? You know, for us, it's so it's such an important factor to learn about if you're growing or if you would like to grow. So this is a simple yes or no question. Just tell us, you know, if you're growing your food, yes. If you're not, no, that's okay. Uh, we're all here to learn. And the third question, of course, is if you're growing your own food, what are you growing? If you're not growing, what would you like to grow? So please share with us. We would love to learn more about what uh, fruits, vegetables, you know, that you guys are thinking about growing or you are growing or you plan to grow this summer or you're interested in growing. So, yeah, I see 20 people in, a, in attendance. I want everyone to respond <laughs> to your best of your ability. Of course, that, that's up to you. But um, definitely would love to get that feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. We are seeing some good responses so far. 11 people have responded and a good 80% of you are actually growing your own food. I am excited for this. I would love to learn. I would love to see. I can't wait to like pull up the results of the poll to see what you guys are actually growing. This is exciting. Okay. Okay. We have everyone, uh, 13 people have answered from different areas. All right. All right. I'm going to give you guys a, a few more, a few more seconds to respond. Not every, you don't all have to respond. I see six, 13 of you have responded. Are we good? Going once, going twice. All right. Oh, oh, we got some more people answering and responding. Thank you so much. All right. I'm going to close the book. Oh, we have more people. You guys are active today. I love it. I love it. I was going to give you guys two minutes, but we're at the two minute mark and I still see so many people responding, Phil. Um, okay. 
Waking up, man. Yeah, everybody's waking up. Everybody's joining in. I love it. I love it. All right, I'll give you 15 more seconds. 15 more seconds. They ran and grabbed some food like I told you. (laughs) That is true. That is true. That is true. 15 more seconds, and I'll close the poll so we can jump right into introducing our special guest. All right, let's end the poll. All right, let's share this results. Let's see what's going on here. All right, see view details. Let's see. Okay, we got some good questions on here. So I have a whole other screen, y'all. So don't mind me and my my face facing the other way. All right, Phil, let me give you the results as my computer loads. I'm having trouble hearing. Can you say that again? Sorry, that's my Alexa. (laughs) I I see the results there. Um, Yes. Tell where people are joining us from. Let me see uh, if I got any details. No, I see some details. Uh, let's see. I see Missouri. Welcome from Missouri. You're welcome. Houston, Texas. Okay. Dallas. This is awesome. Atlanta. Welcome. Welcome. Wow. Dallas again. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Houston. Look at this. Dale, Texas. That's amazing. Texas. All right. All right. San Antonio. Welcome. I'm in San Antonio right now. (laughs) Houston. Houston. There we go. Rockaway Beach, Oregon. Wow. Welcome. Welcome. We seem like we're everywhere. Dallas. Welcome. Fort Worth. Thank you. Welcome. Balch Springs, Texas. This is amazing. Charlotte, okay. Kentucky, all right. Florida, okay. Welcome. And Dallas, wow. Thank you all so much for being here. This is so exciting. And um, we see that, Bill, just so you, I don't know if you, I'm sure you can see, 60% of respondents are actually growing. Um, right. And 41% say they're not growing anything. Right. Now, right. um. One of our respondents says, um, just want to know more about black farmers in Texas and hope to make contact for a possible story. I'm a writer. Okay. All right. Welcome. Please you know, reach out to Phil. He's the man. Reach out to <laughs> Phil. <laughs> um, someone said, currently in school for sustainable agriculture and food systems, my plan is to grow a variety of fruits and vegetables. That's great. You're in the right place. Raya will answer a lot of your questions so, so far. Someone said, not yet. Well, we hope to inspire you today. We hope to very much inspire you. Someone said, all kinds of greens and cruciferous veggies. Okay. Well, Raya can definitely answer that. I've even seen some of his uh, no, uh, his uh, Tuesday seeds. He shows you his gardens every single time. So you're definitely going to learn. Someone says they are growing aloe vera. I want to grow whatever won't die. Well, you're <laughs> in the right place. I think that is definitely right. Uh, let's see. Let's go through some of these. Uh, uh, this person says tomatoes, squash, kale, collards, beans, radishes, winter squash, all the yummy things. I'm jealous. Am I invited to, to the cookout? <laughs> Cause I'd love to try some. Yeah, I know. I know Elena. She 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 brought some of them things too. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Another she, person said. Modest. Yeah. Another person said veggie melons. Okay, we're going through this really quickly. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Someone said they're growing tomatoes, onions, watermelon, squash, herbs, and leafy greens. Wow. We have a few farmers in here, Phil. Um, another person says strawberries, lettuce, celery, garlic, sweet peas, asparagus, kale, tomatoes, and more to come this year. Congratulations. Someone else says fruits, veggies, herbs, and medicinal. Okay. All right. Welcome. Welcome. Someone said they are not growing, but they would love to grow some leafy and root veggies, berries, fruit trees, everything if possible. They must have a lot of land. I'm excited. Someone said they're growing salsa greens. Never had salsa green. A, a salsa garden. Hmm. That's interesting. I like to learn more about that. Another person said uh, they recently purchased collard greens and broccoli seeds. So they're planning to grow that this year as well. So a lot of people here to learn. Um, another person said it's vegetable season. That's all they got. <laughs> um, uh, another person said they're growing green peppers, Swiss chard, green onions, cucumbers, and zucchini. That sounds delicious. I love me a good zucchini. All right. And that's it. That's it for our... Uh, that was amazing. Icebreakers, that was yeah. 
Hey, well, that, that's a good icebreaker. We, we, I think we got folks warmed up, and uh, yeah, I, I think they want to know a little bit about how food is money and medicine. And uh, for those of you who have the opportunity to attend our summit uh, this past summer, Uriah actually spoke there. So we asked him to come back and just uh, let us let us grill him a little bit more and go a little <laughs> bit deeper on yeah. that subject. So. Uh, if some of you may know Uriah, I don't want to steal too much of your thunder because uh, it's actually one of the questions I'm going to be asking you or someone here is going to be asking you. But um, Uriah actually wrote and published his own uh, series, a little short series called Let's Grow. Uh, I was supposed to have the books in my hand here to promote that too, but I didn't. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, Uriah, Right, I can't see you, man. So I know they want to see your face. So uh, jump on camera, and I'm going to start off with my first. There he is, <laughs> nice, bro. Uh, I want to. I'm going to start off with the uh, first question. Just ask you to to share with us a little bit about your story and in your background when it comes to food. Oh man! First of all, I, I want to thank um, Phil, uh, Uche, and Arlena for having me here today. Um, this is a wonderful um, experience. You guys are some awesome people to know and to be associated with. And um, I'm blessed to be associated with you guys. Okay. Um, one other thing, do, uh, Phil, I do have a copy of the books right. here. There it is. <laughs> so uh, let's grow. And I know we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But um, uh, my story. So I was born and raised in the North, Boston, uh, to be exact, Boston, Massachusetts. And some of my fondest memories uh, growing up, uh, maybe 10 years old, 11, was going to what they call Haymarket Square in Boston, Massachusetts. And um, uh, if you, if anybody here is from Boston, please, please um, like raise your hand, put that in the chat that you're from up north. So uh, Haymarket Square was a place that we went to every single week um, maybe once or twice a month or three times a month, we used to go to Haymarket and my mother would have this um, fold up carriage that we would take out the trunk and we would shop like at a farmer's market. And so I grew up uh, believing that this is the way people normally shop. They didn't just buy one, one or two apples. They bought a case of apples and shared it with their whole family, which was, uh, which was in our house at that time. And so my mother, that's what she did. She was a true homemaker, an excellent cook, um, a chef. Both my mother and my mother-in-law, they were um, very good cooks. And so like they used to take those raw materials and work magic with them. And so see, see these are some of the early experiences. And then, of course, my father was just uh, growing some of everything. This is all in Boston, Massachusetts. So I thought I thought everybody was doing this. And so this is this is one this is one of the um, fairly um, for some of the earliest memories I have of how I got started in food. Yeah. All right. Who who's got the next one? Our lady. Okay. Anyone pick the there you go. Okay, we're gonna switch. We're gonna switch. Okay, we're gonna tag team. All right. I, <laughs> I thought Phil was gonna do all three. <laughs> all right, I got the next question here for you, Uriah. Yes, Who sir. are some of your mentors and influencers in the food sphere? Good question. So the first person I, I, I have to I have to talk about is my father, who um was uh, who migrated to Boston in the early 50s uh, from a small city in Texas called Udawa, Texas. Um, this was a man that was an outdoorsman and uh, really was concerned about food security. And so, in you know, like many of our parents, I think they caught the tail end of the depression. And so they were always concerned about food. They were raised that way to... Like, where's the food coming from? Like, um, do we have enough? You know, and so like somewhere along the way, my 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 father particularly, he did not, um, that was always a concern of his. He always grew food. He always froze food. He just, he was always that type of guy. And he just loved doing it. And um, 
some of my fondest memories are, are just I could see his face just smiling while he worked in his garden and he would just share his produce. He was very open handed with his produce. Not he he wouldn't even he wouldn't very real. I, I don't remember him ever charging anybody for what he grew. He just had he was just so much. We had so much as a family growing up that he would just really just share. Um, and I realized that when you are growing, what happens is that you 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 are blessed with so much that you can't your family can't possibly use it all. And so we were stewards of our neighborhood, and we would actually share with all nationalities in our neighborhood in this in in uh, this Roxbury, Massachusetts. We would give food to people. People would ask, can I have a bag of those peaches? And my father would give away those peaches. He would just give them away. And um, we we were stewards of the neighborhood. And uh, and that's one of my, he was probably my my first, uh, he was my first um, uh, influence. And then the second thing uh, I want to mention is that the Bible, uh, just reading the Bible growing up, everything was about agriculture. Uh, everything from the very beginning to the very end, and it starts in a garden, and then it ends in a garden, and all throughout there's agriculture, there's cattle, there's crops, there's seeds, there's planting, and so um, this thing, these things influenced um, how I thought, and so uh, yeah, so those are the two main influences, um, early influences in my life. I, I had a question on that, so um, just for for our audience, because I know I get a lot of questions. You know, sometimes people don't feel like they have enough space to grow. Mm -hmm. um, what was the, you know, what was the situation with you growing up as far as your garden space? I know, you know, we're here in Texas, so mm -hmm. automatically everybody thinks they have to have, you know, 50 to 100 acres to grow something. And can you elaborate on that a little bit? Oh, good question, Phil. Um, so, you know, we, my father was doing this before urban agriculture was, was hip. Okay. And um, we had, uh, we, we, this property that we owned in Boston was, uh, it had a vacant lot that abutted our house, abutted our, our um, little um, plot in right there in Roxbury. And so my father, um, my, my, my family, my, my wife, even that we cleared off this lot. Just cleared it out. We we took chainsaws to it, cleared out tires, whatever was there, and he just established this amazing garden that had to be, I would say, maybe about three thousand square feet. Not a really big space, but um, it was. He just grew everything there, um, all kind of fruit trees and grapes. Um, um, we had black walnuts. The name of the street was Walnut, you know, and so. There was walnut trees all along this this, this street, and um, we had beans and everything. And he just was uh, just amazing. And so you don't you do not need a lot of space. That's a, a misconception. Um, I did I was going to touch on that, but um, the USDA actually defines um, a farm as a place where that you could produce and grow a thousand dollars worth of produce on that on that spot. That is a farmer ranch, and so like. Um, the the idea that you do need a lot of space is not true. Um, here I have I have a very small space that I grow. Um, I grow I grow all year round, and uh, we harvest like I said, at least we harvest at least once a day. And I even give away food, so um, you do not need a lot of space. We're, we're going and, and you said give away a couple of times, which is cool. You know, <laughs> I, I like that community piece, but. You know, especially for our listeners, we're, you know, working on some things right now um, because part of this, why you tuned in, as we said, food is medicine, but it's also money. And uh, we do ask for you to keep tuning in, keep hitting that newsletter because we're putting some things together that I've already touched on um, in our year in recap that is coming alive as we speak. And some of the folks that you see here faces that you see are right now um doing the first phase of that getting trained and all that good stuff so they can be in position um to to make sure that you get the information you need to turn your turn this into a business for you not only feed your family but turn it to business so didn't want to turn don't want to turn this into an infomercial i know 
Arlena's got her hand up, so so it's all <laughs> you. Uh, I was going to say, interject that I have grown on a small apartment in Dallas. And so he said small, but I mean, you can be really small. So I use laundry baskets, the round cylinder kind that kind of was tall. I grew the potatoes in that one, cucumbers, vine, and I kind of use clips to vine it to the balcony. And um, I had herbs and little small containers that I bought at the Dollar Tree. They were baskets that I poked holes in the bottom. So you really can maximize some growth in a small space. Yeah, true. Well, I have a follow-up question. Uh, now, I, I, it's more related. I see you have a lot of books behind you, and obviously you're a writer, published, obviously. So what inspired you to uh, publish your own book? What, what was your inspiration behind that? Ooh, that's a, that's a great question, Uche. Um, you know, uh, do, do anybody here remember the bicentennial year? Bicentennial year. Anybody? Do, do you remember the bicentennial year? Okay. So we was in elementary school, right? And so, so the teacher goes, we want everybody to show up as a revolutionary war hero. The bicentennial was the birthday. It was the 200th year, 200th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And so like the American Revolution and all that. So uh, Boston was particular, particularly very vibrant because that's what they call like the, 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 the seat of liberty and all of this, right? So I was young and they said, we need you to come to school as a bicentennial um, hero, a revolutionary war hero. And so here I am, this, this one uh, black child in a group of about 25 uh, uh, white children and so I had to figure out who I was going to come as. And so um, I found out that the first person that died for the Revolutionary War cause was a man named Crispus Attucks, who was Black. And um, there were streets and schools named after him, but most people have no idea who that is. So I came to school like him. And what happened was that uh, inspired me to begin to publish books that reflected our history because they weren't being published. Um, so... Let's Grow was, is, 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 you know, like an organic uh, uh, growth from that um, early fascination. And so I, I said, hey, a lot of people probably don't know our contributions. And so what I found is that Let's Grow, um, with Let's Grow, I found all these innovators in um, food industry and agriculture, uh, inventors that had to do with, um, with, with the food systems here in America. See, we weren't just brought here to just do labor. We were the uh, innovators. They, 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 they recognized. They said these, these people have skills, and like we just need to find one, and we can just we can be we can be rich, you know. So they took our ideas, and so those ideas uh, will, if we do not publish those ideas, our children won't know. Uh, we'll forget, and so let's grow is. Um, uh, uh, my, my contribution to making sure that we do not forget and our children do not forget. And um, that like some of the homeschool parents on this call, um, these are some books that you should have in your, in your, um, your library. So when you do talk about um, agriculture, the children don't automatically think about slavery. Um, they don't think about like sharecropping or drug. They, they, they have to think about the, um, the value of growing food and our ancestors were very, they were instrumental in that process and making America what it is today. Um, and so we, we must never forget that. And that's what Let's Grow is about. Okay. Um, and right. you can, I think, I think Uche, I want to say too, um, the, the, if you like to purchase those books, the website is in the chat. Yes. And I'll be dropping the link right now. So everyone can see. All right. And I know we have an audience member who's got their hand up. We haven't forgot about you. We're, we're going to actually do a Q&A here uh, at the end, if I'm correct. Uh, cor right? Is that right, Duce? Yes, we will be doing a Q&A at the end. So um, just stay patient. Have Write your questions down if you have any. 
we will be able to answer your questions at the end, or you can use our Q&A function and you can ask your questions on there and we can read it out. Um, and it will be the first to, to ask. I, you know, we'll go first come first serve on the questions, but definitely Raya is here to answer as many questions as possible within the time frame because we want to respect your time as well. And uh, another thing I didn't point out at the beginning uh, was that we will be sending this recording out to y'all too. So uh, all, all attendees. So uh, uh, if you want to hit rewind on anything, we'll make sure you get that. Um, but I, I got another question. Uh, just going back to the summit uh, you shared, uh, I just remember this because you created a buzz in the room with the numbers that you shared um, as far as some of the health and economic statistics that are out there. Can you, can you hit us with some of those numbers that you uh, you shared at the summit? Oh, man, that's a loaded question there, Phil. Um, but it's my pleasure to talk about you, this. Uh, I do. Um, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to break down some numbers for us. Um, you know, like many, I want to say this, but I'm going to, I'm going to set this question up, set the answer up with this. We, we're, we're, like, you know, you see many of our um, parents um, making sure that their children are, uh, uh, they're, they, they're in basketball camps, they're in the sports camps, they, they have like um, equipment that they, that the parents hope will allow them to make money in this in this life right and so um i'm going to break down some numbers for you and you tell me if this might be something children should be involved with so i'm gonna i'm gonna spotlight a city in america i'm gonna use houston texas okay and so but let me give you some facts for us so the average american household consists of 2.5 people in a 2023 census right um the household consists uh, let me see, a household includes all the people who live in a housing unit. So it could be two, but the average is like 2.5. Now, based upon the USDA's October 2023 20, data, the average weekly grocery bill of a family of three in the United States is $225, $225.50. Um, this changed. So like the information I shared at the summit, I said 151. But now this information has um, they've they've updated and it's two twenty five two hundred twenty five dollars and fifty cents um, based upon the USDA's October twenty twenty three data the average monthly grocery bill of a family of three is nine hundred and two dollars this is what you spend monthly as a family in America just the average right uh, so Houston Texas has eight hundred. 897,510 households. 23% of those households are Black or African American. So that means that you have 206, uh, 206,427 African American households. Now, if you multiply that number by 902, you'll find that we spend every month 186 million, 197,154 dollars per month on food. So this is a lot of money that leaves our pockets. Um, um, I don't know if you guys know, um, HEB, um, uh, Kroger's, um, Walmart, whoever else supplies our community with foods. They don't look like us. The founders don't. And there is no, um, uh, grocery chain where we're like, we can say like, Oh, we own that. You know, and this is what we, we sell these products and we make sure that our people get the food they need. So this is like a multi-million dollar, this is like a month, 186, 186 million, 197,154 dollars per month goes out of our pockets and it probably does not come back. Now, if you are a small grower, you probably get a little percentage of this coming back. And the reason I share that number is because, you know, you can say, man, if I could get just 1% of that money, I would be doing pretty good. If I could figure out some added value product or some type of uh, raw, you know, some type of uh, uh, maybe some beans, some, some potatoes, something. If I could like have regular customers buying this from me every single month, I could be doing pretty well. I could leave this job I don't like, you know, maybe I could do that, you know. 
Now, one other thing I want to share is multiply that number by 12. So that number is 2,234,365,848 dollars per that's annual that leaves our communities, leaves our pockets. Um, and we're and right now we're telling our children to get jobs and play, you know, some of our children being trying to be rap artists, uh, want to be uh, want to be the next great quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys and different things like that. When this money right here, this is not right now. Food is not sexy, but it pays the bills. Um, some of us, I know my family, sometimes we go to the supermarket twice a day sometimes. Um, you know, sometimes you go like maybe, maybe not twice a day, but like at least once you go in there and grabbing something, that money's not coming to us. Okay. Um, and you might have a yard space that might be small, but you could produce something that you could feed your community and supplement your income. And if you really take it seriously, you, you know, even a, even a, um, small convenience store, uh, um, I, we had several convenience stores in Boston they make a lot of money. They make a lot of money. I'm not saying that we supply those stores with milk, bread, or anything, quite frankly, but we were, we watched the community, how they revolved around these convenience stores. And so we really need to, every other community comes to our neighborhoods and just sets up, you know, um, they take this thing very seriously. They, we pay for their children to go to college through their small little markets. And so we have to we have to be men, right? And take this and take responsibility for what our community eats. And you know, and so I'm gonna I hope that was enough uh fire right there, Phil, to uh to answer that question. Now that, that was good fire. It it's so much more impressive when we're at the summit, it's on the big screen and you can see yeah. those numbers that come across, but but that still had great impact. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. I was um I have the next question, but I was gonna say I like to <clears throat> impress my kids, mm. and I always throw out ten percent and one percent and twenty five percent, and I tell my kids that I um when I was young, someone told me I didn't have enough math, so I I learned the concept of money. You know, point two five was twenty five cents. Well, it's a fourth of a dollar, mm. and. And so I could do it very fast. I just moved the decimal really fast and I impressed my children. But them numbers were so big. I was like, wait, well, how many decimals? <laughs> and I was like, I wonder if my calculator can fit all those numbers when you got some. That, look, that's, some called, that's, billion. Called Bugs, that's called Bugs Bunny money. <laughs> right, right. This dollar sign is going to, right? Yeah, it's just, right? It's just a stack. It's a big bag, really big bag. Um, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so my question I have for you, what would you say are some of the things about the food we currently eat that may not be mainstream information? Ooh, man, that's juicy. Um, you know, um, the Bible says all people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And there's a lot of things that our children uh are not learning and we don't know as adults. And um, I, I, one thing I'm gonna I'm back up and say this, we don't really know how our bodies work. You know, right. when you should eat, when you should stop eating, when, what you should be eating. We have to go back. We don't know how the planet works. We don't know like um, um, the the Europeans who set up um, this, the, the, the food system in America, they'll do anything for money. They cut a lot of corners. And so uh, what happens is when they use, they use these pesticides to get around nature or God, right? And so that affects what happens to your body. So here you go. Um, so like you have these pesticides they're using, um, they're, 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 they have no regard for the outcome. They have no regard for the outcome to you and your children your loved ones, you, they, they know the side effects, but you know, the money's good, man. And they, they, they can't stop. And so, so, so these are some of the things that we don't know. Um, I was just doing some research about bread. Um, I, one of my, one of my, um, 
somebody I like listening to on YouTube, Dr. Bobby Price, he was talking about after you, he said this one, he said, after you watch this video, you might stop eating bread. And um, I watched it, of course, and I was like, oh man, I got to stop eating bread. Because what they were saying was um, they are, they, they've hy hybridized um, the wheat, the wheat that's grown in the field. And he, and he broke that whole thing down. Then on top of that, he said that um, they are spraying it with um, uh, chemicals that really disrupt our, our systems. One of those chemicals, oh man, uh, I want to say he mentioned he mentioned um, atrazine and he also mentioned glyphosate and he, and he talked about how they affect our bodies. These things we don't know. The bread that we eat today is not the bread we grew up with. Um, I remember eating bread and um, we, you know, it was different than what's today. Uh, my mother-in-law comes from the islands and um, she said when she when she got here certain foods that she always ate all her life she ate a lot of bread where she was from but when she got here and ate the bread from from America it made it did not it did not sit well it made her sick and so like there's things that they put in the food uh, I am not a chemist uh, but atrazine glyphosate they spray on these crops um, and they have a very detrimental um, effect on our bodies. Uh, there's a lot that we don't know about our food system. And uh, once you start growing it, there's one other thing I do want to mention. Uh, certain foods, they need a certain season to grow properly. Uh-oh. I think we, we lost our video. Yeah, we got it. Okay, there we go. Um, certain foods, uh, they're grown in um, certain seasons. So what's happening is uh, food is being transported from great distances to feed us. Uh, today, I was at a, a place and they had watermelon. And I was just like, where did they get these watermelons from? You know, and I'm just looking at it and I'm saying, you know, like they probably harvested it very, very, very young. Um, or it wasn't right when they got it. And sure enough, when I, I, um, I didn't taste it. Uh, I just looked at it and I was like, it looks very immature. Um, and so like, we have to know what foods and vegetables are supposed to be grown and what season. So we'll recognize whether or not we should be even eating that. Um, I'm looking at fruits and vegetables coming from the European Union. Why? In Texas? From, you know, so like um, these are things that we don't know. We don't know how the food system runs. And so the, we, we get, um, well, I want to say we get played and we think that it's a deal when it's really not. And I'm going to, I'm going to leave that right there. So I guess let me let me ask a follow-up question. I mean, like what what can we do? What what is what what solutions do we have as a black community? Can we start adopting or creating within our community to get us back on track? Okay, the the first thing is we have to let go of the stigma um of growing food. Um once again, when we've been indoctrinated to not like to grow food in America. Um, we went through this, you know, every time you turn on uh, um, Black History Month, they, you know, they really, you know, you got the slavery movies, you have like all these things, injustices that happen to us. Uh, today, we have some of the most educated people I know. We have a lot of wealth right here on the screen. And we said like, hey, we need to raise this much money. We could boom, we could do it just like that and buy something and just like just grow the food with the, with the proper commitments, right? Uh, what we need to do, we have to start growing. Start small. A number one, I would really like make sure that our children and your children are gonna do what you do, not what you say. So you're gonna have to like say, hey, you know something? Let me go out here. I watched a couple of videos. I got some courage. Let me go out here and put something in the ground and see, like you know. And oh man, my video keeps. I want to, I'm going to go out and see if I can uh, do some of these things I'm reading about. Um, I'm watching all these wonderful people on YouTube. They're having a ball and um, I want to be part of this too. And um, so like, that's what you got to do. Um, I would suggest that uh, people, there's a lot of different, there's a lot of free knowledge out here besides, you know, uh, besides what we say here, you know, like different courses you have to pay for. Um, there's a lot of courses. I, I would suggest a number one, um, visit, um, you know, go to, go to the university of YouTube and watch some videos. One of the things I do want to mention is even go to your extension office in the counties that you live in, get as much information as you can, um, Google it, 
take take your um, your smartphone and dig around and find out what you can about what you want to grow. I would visit nurseries. I would visit local growers. Uh, one thing um, I, I strongly suggest people do is visit your farmer's markets. Find out when the farmer's markets are and just walk through there and talk to people, talk to the growers and the producers and say, hey, how did you do it? Was that hard? How long have you been doing this? And you'll find that the people are just like you. They just have the courage to make the move. And so like we have to uh, we have to make those moves. You have to investigate. Uh, I don't know what's anyway, we have to investigate my camera, y'all. I'm sorry about that. We have to investigate like like who who it, uh oh hold on. We have to learn, we have to find out like how to grow food. Um seek as much information as you can. There's a ton of books, there's growers. And one thing I'll say is this most growers I know. They're very open with the knowledge. They have no problem sharing with you. They'll you walk away with a whole bunch of information and some seeds and some food, all kind of stuff. And um, we need more growers. We need our children to understand like how important it is. Uh, one thing I love doing is like harvesting like salads from my yard. Um, people calling me, hey, I, you have any more of those um those scallions? And, yeah, I have some. You know, and you know, like you kind of share. And uh, 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 um, you kind of share it and like in your community, you might even like give away some of it and barter, but you just want to start doing it. Um, one reason why I wrote Let's Grow was to encourage. Um, I want the message to be encouraging and I wanted people to see that, um, you know, like once you did grow um, a bunch of tomatoes, what are you going to do next with all those tomatoes? Are you going to make a salsa? Are you going to make a tomato paste? So there's recipes in there besides the history and how to grow different things. There's recipes for you and your children to do. Um, and I think, um, man, there's so much I could go on and on about this. Um, we have to realize that there's a small percentage of the planet Earth that grows the food for the people of the planet Earth. It's 2% of the population of the United States that feeds this country, 2%. So now here, you know, like when you take on this responsibility, you become like one of these, you, you're like in the elite status. And here you are like growing food and, and, and producing food. And you want your children to have that type of knowledge, right? And so these are some of the things I would do if I wanted to start, you know, if I wanted to start. And, and, and by the way, um, I think, Phil, if you want, you can post my uh, uh, contact information up there and I will definitely help anybody that wants, uh, if, if you're close to me. I, I most definitely will, and I, I got some things to piggyback on there, but Arlene's had her hand up so long. I'm going to let you go first, Arlene, and I'm okay. going to piggyback on some of the things you said there, you're right. Um, I was going to elaborate a little bit on what Uriah was saying about the chemicals. Mm. I do have a strong background in chemistry and cell mm. biology, and lastly, public health. So I'm very passionate, so I want to share share the statistic that African Americans have the highest rate of cancer. We contract cancer the highest of any ethnicity, and we are the most likely to die from the cancer. So, um, and they have found that it's no longer genetics, hmm. not because it runs in the family. And I've heard someone say before, no one in your family is running. So that's why y'all all overweight. <laughs> I heard that. I thought that was real funny. But um, it's not necessarily genetics. It's found that it is your environment and what you are putting into your body that is causing that cancer. So if we have the highest rate, the people of color, that means that we have the highest rate of also consuming the most toxic foods. So this is another reason that we want to um, definitely reconsider what we feed to our children because surely we we no one wants to see a child have to struggle from cancer and it's starting to become the norm to think that oh well someone in our family has died of cancer that's not normal and you have um you have control of that with your diet appreciate that and um yeah i, I um so often they the mainstream wants us to believe you know, the myth that it's hereditary and really 
if you look at the studies, 95% of those diseases that you're talking about, Elena, are, are food-based. So, so, so true. So much things that we, you know, we have to learn and unlearn. Uh, I'm going to say this and then Uche, we can jump into the Q&A because it, it's not about us. It's, a, it's about the folks that we invited here to be with us. And we do want to um, open it up for them. Um, I just wanted to piggyback on, on what Uriah was saying, you know, and, you know, really, you know, we our mantras be the exception. And a big part of that is making, you know, just like Uriah said, taking the time to to know what you need to know. It takes what it takes. You know, some of that is attending farmers markets, you know, whatever that is, you know, let's get our children involved. Let's start mastering how soil health works, first and foremost, because whatever you grow, it all starts where? In the soil. Yes, that's where it starts. Yeah. So that's where we need to start. Um, I went to a conference just last week. I was the only brother up in there. It was a sea of big time farmers, you know, the good old boys. And they was getting the information and the information they was getting was how to grow the way our forefathers grew when we were brought to this country, to be honest with you. They, they was trying to get them cheat notes because they see where things is going. So when I walked in the room, I knew I was in the right place. Matter of fact, I sent my parents. I had to send somebody because they wouldn't have believed that. So I sent it to my parents. I said, look, look at this. You know, so um, it's real. We need to master soil health. But let's also master how money works. Let's understand how money works and get our finances and our business so we can have agribusinesses, you know, and we can grow our own food for our health. So with that said, I'm going uh, to hand it over to you, Uche. All right. Um, thank you so much, Raya. Thank you so much, Arlena. And thank you so much, P. Wade. Attendees, this is your chance. I saw some hands being raised. Feel free to raise your hands. We're going to give you an opportunity to speak and or you can ask your questions through the chat. So we have three ways to ask your questions. You can either raise your hand, you can type into our webinar chart chat, or you can ask in the Q&A section. So I'm, I, I look, I, I learned a lot. And I'm sure some of you have questions. If you don't know, you have Raya, who is a wealth of knowledge. Like when I talk, when you talk about like vegetables, it's like he knows it. During the like little freeze that we had, he was talking about how to save plants. He was talking about when to grow seeds. You, you heard him talk about watermelons is not in season. So if you're buying watermelons right now, you're not getting the right thing. So I have a question. Uh, what, what? How do we know or what resources do we need to like to get to garner more information about when to buy certain fruits and vegetables? Because I think, you know, I'm I'm not a grower like a lot of you amazing folks are. I have my little plants here and there, but I don't know when a watermelon is a season. I may think I want watermelon right now, but I go to the store and it's served to me and I'm thinking, oh, I'm just going to buy this. So how do we as, you know, non-growers understand like, okay, what's in season? When do we grow it? When do we buy it? When do we purchase? Like, what? how do we know this information? Wow, good question, uh, Uche. Um, I'll, I'll say this. I'm going to point once again, you can go online and find um, growing charts, growing charts for your region or your zone. Um, and they will tell you uh, when to plant, when to grow certain crops. Uh, you could even go to your extension office. If you if you go, if you Google extension office and put in your zip code, you'll probably find your nearest extension office. You can walk in there and, and find a wealth of information, um, just handouts that they want to give to people. Um, I even strongly suggest even taking a, um, a master gardener's course or something like that um, with, your extension, with your extension offices, right? But um, that's one thing is your planting charts. Oh, you mentioned watermelon. Watermelon is a warm season crop. Okay, it's it's just not grown right now. Uh, most places, United States right now, this is winter time. So um, unless you have some type of um, artificial environment, you're not growing. <laughs> you're not growing. Maybe if you live in Florida, you might be able to get away with that, but not not in um not here in Texas and um. Yeah, not here in Texas, but growing charts will show you what's in season, 
and what should be available to you. We have a few questions coming in. Um, now I will do my best to answer to ask these questions in order. But if I'm, I'm, I'm not, I do apologize to my attendees. But uh, we're gonna start with uh, we have an anonymous attendee. They sent this and they said, "How how do I have how do I save the seeds from my crop after I harvest it? For example, my green peppers. What do I do with the seeds for the next season?" Ooh, that's a good, that's a great question. Uh, let me, I'm gonna back up on that. Andy, most of us, this is a very uh, eclectic group that's on this call. Um, people here are the agri-curious and you just taking a step forward to be, to be in this, uh, this workshop is great. And so you're, you're different. And I'm gonna tell you this, what I mean by that is you probably juicing and you probably cook at home. And so with all these vegetables that you get from juicing and cooking, you should be saving seeds from all of the fruits and vegetables that you like, that you love to eat. And so those peppers, when you, when you do get those peppers, um, as you open them up, you can see that those, if the pepper is ripe, the seeds will be in there. The seeds should be brittle. They need to dry out and become brittle. If they're not brittle, they're not uh, mature. And so like, yeah, you have to be real careful with that because you could like try to um, save some seeds that are not mature. Uh, all the other fruits and vegetables, a lot of them like peppers, peppers, the nightshade family, you got your peppers, your tomatoes, those guys are a little bit more uh, intricate to save, but realistically, like a tomato, for instance, I would rub off the, the mushy stuff that's inside tomato onto a paper towel and let it dry on that paper towel. You can even plant it. Once it dries, you can tear off the paper, that piece of the paper towel that has a seed on it and that you just plant the whole thing right there in the ground, but just smear it on a piece of paper, a new piece of like a paper towel and allow that um, seed to dry. Um, and also the same thing with peppers, let them dry so that they'll be mature. Thank you, thank you. We're, we're, I'm getting the same thing in our, in our comments. Um, someone said, put them on a napkin and let them dry out, store in a cool, dry, dry place. Uh, mm -hmm. someone, someone said, take them and dry them. So yes, we are getting the same responses from you. So we have a few agriculturists, you know, in, in, our, in our attendees as well. Um, we have another question. Um, this is from Nicholas. And he says, what tips and resources do you recommend for soil health? Or is there availability to visit an operation to learn or opportunity to have coffee and a conversation? <laughs> <laughs> oh man you know something that's the big thing i think wait a minute phil phil was just talking about like soil health and he's the he's the soil health guy and i'm gonna i'm gonna say this like a lot of people um we talk about what we eat but we really need to be concerned with what our plants are eating if you want healthy food your soil has to be healthy with the proper nutrients in it and i'm, I'm beginning to really um dive into that i i, I personally um, I don't use any artificial fertilizers. I use a lot of manures when I grow things, but I'm beginning to learn that that might not be the best step to do either. Um, I do a lot of composting, uh, but Phil, I I'm going to throw that one to you, man, because you just you the soil in Arlena too, like you guys. In the um, I, I think there there's a great question. Number one, uh, number two, know that we are rolling that out. Uh, I kind of mentioned earlier. Um, some of the faces that you see on here, we're going through some train the trainers now to bring that to you. Um, mm -hmm. So just know that those tips and resources are coming. Uh, make sure you you're checking out that newsletter and that that uh, resource blog. But it, there's an order, and what we found is that if we just say, "Hey, you know, do this with your soil," and you don't know the why behind the what. What most farmers end up doing is resorting back to the easy thing. You know, all of a sudden you're using Roundup and, you know, or you watch something on YouTube and they're suggesting you to do something that is totally what you shouldn't do. So we are putting together, I'm going a long ways to say within the upcoming months, we had hoped to have our landing page ready today. Uh, but we will be doing this the last, we'll be doing knowledge form the last Tuesday of each month. 
next knowledge form, we will have a landing page for you to sign up uh, for our spring course, which we're going to break that down. We're going to cover the history, kind of what Uriah touched on, the history behind, you know, how ag is done now, which is called, uh, crazy as it sounds, conventional ag agriculture isn't really conventional. It's something that was created, you know, in the last, you know, 50, 60, 70 years. And we're led to believe that it's the way that th things are done. And now everybody, like I said, the room I walked in was a sea of folks looking to figure out how to switch and make this pivot back to farm the way our forefathers did. But it starts with understanding the history of how we got to where we are and then the basics of, you know, what is what is soil versus what versus dirt. You know, a lot of people don't know the difference. You know, we got to know that. How do we, how come, you know, a lot of people feel like they do a soil test to find out what nutrients in the soil, not realizing those nutrients are already there. It's not about putting nutrients in the soil. It's about getting the biology in the soil, the living creatures in the soil that are going to pull those nutrients out based on what you're trying to grow. So, those things um, aren't an overnight thing. I have You have to be careful when you're talking about getting tips because sometimes, just like with anything, you know, just like baking a cake, it's the couple ingredients that they're not telling you the reason why your cake don't taste the way the expert cake does. So um, it is a process, but we are here to be the exception. And part of being the exception is willing as adults to take those steps to get the information and to learn it the right way versus kind of cutting corners. So we don't want to do that. We want to do the same thing that I saw those people at those conferences. They paid thousands of dollars to be at that conference. Thank goodness I was invited <laughs> for free. Or I probably wouldn't have went myself, but when I walked in the door, I knew I was in the right place. And those folks were standing at attention to get the information that we're going to give to everybody who wants it for free. So stay tuned. We're going to get that to you. Uh, we just don't want to give it to you in the wrong way. We have another question, and this came from Dara Munifa. I hope I said that right. It has been motivating to listen to you all, Black farmer influencers who help make farming okay and exponentially more than that are so important in reversing the unfortunate reality that many aren't into it for uninformed reasons. The question, what support networks exist for Black farmers, groups, and NGOs or umbrella agencies that make it easier to reach out for sharing resources and grant or funding opportunities, ETC, Black or BIPOC cooperatives, ETC? Thank you, Dar. Well, you at the right place. Um, I'm gonna throw this one back to Phil or Arlena. Go ahead, make the you know you're at the right place. This is that place. That's my same answer, and there and there's more. We we're going to. That's what this is about: is growing our tribe. I thank you. Number one, thank you for those kind words, because that's what this is all about. Um, there's so much great information. There's so many great people, just like the folks you see on this screen. Um, the sad part is we're not connecting the dots as a community, and that's what this is about. So um, there are plenty more out there like this, and, and you'll see more, and that's what this Knowledge Forum is, is inviting the people that you need to know to this forum so you do need to get, so you do know how to get that information. So we do encourage you to continue to tune in, like I said, last Tuesday every month, we're going we're gonna to be here. And if there's someone we think you should know, they're going to be here too. We're going to be quizzing them. So, and then open it up to y'all to quiz them. So be, be ready. We have another question that came in. This is made. He says, hi, do you know any farmers that are tired of mainstream farming heavy equipment breaking? Example, John Deere right to repair stuff right to repair type of stuff. Mm. I'm going to let Arlena or somebody else take that I, question. I, I, I wish my uh, 
my my dad Wade Senior was on here. He he would hit that one pretty good. But the um um where what you can do is if you could leave in the in uh, or direct message one of us or uh, Uche if you don't mind putting our email. I'll put our email in the in the uh, chat. Hit me up and we'll point you in the right direction. That is kind of what Uriah would refer to as a loaded question because it kind of depends on the equipment you have and where you're located. You know, we don't want to, Texas is a big place, so we don't we don't <laughs> want to send you on a wild goose chase. So I'm going to put uh, our email in the chat here. And if you don't mind, please send that question directly and uh, we'll, we'll get that for you. If we had a if we had a blanket answer, at least unless somebody here does, uh, please put that in the chat. Otherwise, I will get that information for you. I also put the um, the website so that all attendants, if you're not already um, receiving a newsletter, please sign up with the newsletter and it will automatically let you know what's going on when we have these panels. And that includes me. We're, we're all in a, of a network and partners with each other. So specifically these particular all of us on this panel and there are more hands and arms that are part of our network so um instead of me doing my little uh pitch and sharing with you what i have going on it will come down the funnel and you will know um so once i'm ready to share those information i see some of my guests asking questions that is going i've guarantee this information is going to come back around to you um and it will be announced if you're only looking at texas small farmers newsletter you will still be up to date and then we're going to get to know who you are where you are so we can pinpoint your needs and i have also included my email and contact for those that are local or not local again like i was saying we're all one network so you'll still be talking to the same we're we're still going to be connecting to each other so you if you come to me i'm still going to be using these same resources that you see on this panel oh dar got lost oh no dar got lost she missed okay um let me address this dara missed uh, previous chat messages please respond things okay dara we will repost the links right now for you we will post all the links for you. I'm curious if anyone has any more questions. Um, Deidre, I hope I answered your question inadvertently when I respond. Um, Deidre is part of our local network, so you will not have to look up all this information on your own. It is coming straight to you, hot off the press. I guarantee. Um, we just this is just a, a time for everyone to collectively talk, swap, and share. And thank you for everyone that I sent the um the link to that that's part of my network that joined us. Um, I told you we're a family, so we'll be sitting at the table with each other a lot more often. All right. And is that a do we is that all our questions that we have? No, we didn't cover them all. Um okay, let's, let's get a few more. I we like to keep it within an hour, but hey, we we'll go. A little bit over because we want to make sure we get get those questions answered. I just don't. I can't see them. Me either anymore. I kind of. I got all into it. Sorry. <laughs> right. And um. Well, there's another question here. Um, for you, Uriah. Uh, so you spent some time in Atlanta, and I know we have some folks from Atlanta here already uh and during the origins of their food movement especially where wow. individuals in the black community have really taken that initiative to learn and to grow their own healthy foods can you share a little bit about your experience while in atlanta Woo. Oh, oh, that's a beautiful question um I, I i was i was very blessed oh well let me let me i'm gonna stop here uh I worked in printing and publishing basically my whole life, like from high school all the way to I moved to Atlanta and I get laid off at this job in Atlanta in 2008. 2008 was a real ugly year. Um, 2011, I actually worked. Um, I was taking a master gardener's course in Atlanta and then I actually worked 
on a farm, an urban farm site called Truly Living Well. Truly Living Well allowed me access and the knowledge and experience to learn agriculture, like hands on. Um, I did not go to school. We 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 literally worked a five acre site in the heart of Atlanta, Georgia, and um, I cannot tell you, um, I would not trade that experience for any amount of money. Um, um, it was it was a synergy of um, just like everybody was just wanted to know about how to grow how to grow their own food. So you had Rashi Nuri, who is the founder of Truly Living Well. Um, I was I was able to work with a young man, a young gentleman named Eugene Cook. Um, Grow where you are, fascinating um, uh, brothers. I also worked with um, Bobby Wilson on uh, Metro Atlanta Urban Farm and um, and uh, uh, what's that East Point of Atlanta. Amazing, amazing men committed to making sure that our community learns about agriculture. And then at the same time, we have the colleges and the universities that were also agri-curious. They were Spelman, Morehouse, Clark. They were just all coming here, volunteering and putting their hands in the soil. They wanted to know, how are you doing this? This is so cool. And um, I just, um, that's where I received the bulk of my knowledge. I, I got the, the work ethic from my, my father and my mother. But there is when it became real to me what we were doing, what he was doing. Um, there, um, there was a farmer's market every Friday at Truly Living Well that we produced. Nobody else contributed. We produced it right from the field, brought it to be sold. So we watched the whole process from the field, and we watched the exchange of money, the refrigeration, everything that was going on there. And um, um, that's part. And I want to say this, too. Uh, um, there was another, there's a huge blanket organization in Georgia called Georgia Organics, and they were also um, instrumental in the knowledge, uh, uh, making sure that people understood how to grow food and why it was important, so important that people understood that. And th that's what happened in Georgia, and it's still going along. There's a lot of people that I just named a handful of them. A lot of people I grew up and uh, came up in the ranks with who have their own their own organizations, um, uh, what's it, um, Gangsters to Growers, uh, man, my, my, my man, Charles Greenlee, um, um, he's one of the people there, like I mentioned, like Grow Where You Are, that's um, uh, Eugene Cook, and there's a lot of other smaller ones. I haven't been there, we, we haven't been there in several years, so I need to go back and just uh, check in and see, see those people. But um, that was an excellent experience. Good question. Thank you for ask, asking that question. Of course, of course. We have some uh, more questions that have come on, uh, come in as well. Um, this is from Sandra Solomon with Sancella Farms. Um, it says, where can I get organic seeds? Uh, any recommendations? And she had a follow-up question of, are there recommendations or best practices for hoop gardens? I guess the two part question. So now, now the seeds, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, um, I'll say this is that if you Google organic seeds, you're going to find several companies that's going to pop up. They offer, they'll send you free catalogs. These catalogs are amazing. They are a wealth of information. I suggest that everybody like, like, like just find three or four different, um, or um, um, seed catalogs, heirloom seeds. You want to buy nothing but heirloom or open pollinated seeds, and do not buy hybrid if you plan to grow uh, regularly. But you want to buy heirloom and open pollinated. You can find these seeds in catalogs. Some of the some of the places. Let me see. Um, uh, uh, um, let me see. Um, yes. Huh? Somebody say something. I was going to say like fairy fairy Morris. Uh, let me see. One of our attendees said uh, johnnyseeds.com. Thank you, johnnyseeds.com. Go to, if you Google it, you can you can look up and they will, they offer free catalogs. They'll mail you a in-print catalog that you can just look through at your leisure and, um, and, and find the seeds that you need. Um, be careful what's going on during um, COVID. During COVID, um, remember there was a run on seeds. It was hard to find the seeds that you wanted. And so like, you know, like now is the time while you still can, you want to grab your seeds, you want to store those seeds, find a cool place. Um, the colder, the better. 
Um, find some place where you can store seeds. Um, they're going to be a hot commodity. And so you want to get your hands on your favorite fruits and vegetables that your family likes, likes to eat. You want to, you want to store those seeds and the same, and also going back to um, original question. Somebody also mentioned about saving seeds. You want to save the seeds that you like to eat. Just save them. Your favorite fruits and vegetables, save them. Put your children, that's their assignment. When you eat this fruit, make sure I get some seeds back. And like make sure that they understand like we we need these seeds for later on. Um, and there was another part to that question. Um, yes. You mentioned seeds. Uh, are, are there recommendations or best practices for hoop gardens? And I think one of our attendees actually responded with the link. Okay. To uh, I guess a freestanding tunnel walk in garden greenhouse kit mm. from Lowe's. So. I I, I I hope Sandra that helps or if anyone has any other recommendations that would be great That's too. cool you you um, farmers friend has some um, good um, uh, hoop houses um, I do not have a hoop house in my yard I have a very small yard I could not even put a hoop house out there but like you know there are places where you can buy those um, once again you want to visit your farmers markets you want to visit uh, um, farmers and see how they are doing it you're not going to get like I might point you to a place where you can buy it, but you really do want to actually go and walk through and see like the temperature difference when you walk in a hoop house and say, wow, this is how you do this. That's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to walk it. Awesome. <laughs> we, we did um, um, also, it's important to point out that there's a, uh, Uchi, I know we did a Tuesday seed segment on equip. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, and farm numbers as well. Uh, I'll try to, as I go off here, try to find that for for you as well. For those of you who have the space to do that, or may have some, you know, some larger acreage, or maybe trying to do, you know, some small space garden. Um, you, that may be a route to go to if you're talking high tunnel hoop house. That's definitely something to explore. Um, so. Uh, wanted to put that out there too and to say thank you um that's because i'm seeing so many so many people inputting in the comments and just helping one another out that's why this is called a knowledge forum you know so we can because because the guys that you see on the screen guys and gal on the screen we don't necessarily have all the the uh answers but you know together you know we can get this so so happy to hear to see all the the information and feedback in the chat. It really helps all of us. And uh, Marlena has your hand. I, I think uh, Tiffany Roddy has yes. her hand up too. So yes. I don't to get her. And we have an anonymous question as well. So we have three, well, two other people. So, Elena. Oh, no, please let them go first and then I'll, I'll piggyback it after. Okay. Um, let me start with the anonymous attendee because they were first and then Tiffany will get to you. Um, the anonymous attendee, do you all live slash farm in rural areas of Texas? I am looking for at least one to two acres, not near the borders of Texas. If this is an outside of the forum as a question, I understand no answers. Thank you. Um, it would be, it says not near the borders of Texas. Yes. Um, I will say I will say this, and this is part of the the knowledge for why we have the knowledge form is questions like that. So thank you for asking that. Uh, we are actually working because we do have a lot of up and coming farmers and maybe farmers who've been urban gardeners for years, but they want to kind of venture out to rural areas. We are partnering um, with uh, an organization or two who are buying up land. And, you know, and uh, from uh, folks who want to make sure that that farmland stays farmland and plots are being broken up in certain areas. So um, I did put so feel free to reach out to me if that's you. I, I won't say too much more other than when the when the land's available, you know, I reach I got a source that I reach out to that tells me, hey, it's available who do you have who wants to buy land? So if I know who you are and who's looking, I can reach out to you and, you know, it's kind of first come first serve type of basis. If it fits where you want to stay, it may not be exactly where you want to be, but you know, they're not making any more land last I checked. So 
it may be an opportunity for for someone to get started uh, farming and then go from there. You know, I know for sure, one thing I know for sure is folks are buying land. So if it may be an opportunity for you to get in on a plot of land for a third of what you would have to buy it for on the open market. So um, I did put, so make sure you reach out at that admin at tsfrcbo.org. I can't make any promises. It's all based on availability and your ability to to purchase. Uh, opportunity basically is to lease the land first uh, with the option to buy over the next year or so. Great opportunity to get into um, purchasing and becoming a farmer, landowner, and larger space with uh, a fraction of the cost. So that's why we have these knowledge forms so we can bring you things like that. But you know, it's just like the lotto, you, you got to be in it to win it. You got to be on this knowledge form to get this information. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, we have Tiffany Roddy. I'm going to um, give you the option to unmute. So feel free to unmute your mic, Tiffany, and ask what ask your question. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, okay. You can hear me. Okay, I've been in and out the meeting. I do apologize. Um, been traveling to pick my husband up from work, but I remember Uriah, Mr. Carter. They came to my property like in July of 23. Do y'all remember that? So I'm planting a lot, lots of squash and I'm just saying I'm glad to be in the meeting. Glad I caught it and I'm ready to plant. And uh, I had a phone call. I'm kind of jumping around here because like I said, I was driving. I had a phone call from some organization, TDA, wanting to know if I was ready to plant to make money and had all my paperwork in order. Uh, but no, I did not. So I was just saying uh, I can grow. I can plant. I got the space. I'm always got something growing. I'm ready to plant and sell. <laughs> I'm ready to sell my food. So that's all I was gonna gonna say. I'll uh, I'll let uh, Uriah say hello, but uh, <laughs> um, I know he was out at your place, and thank you so much for that. And uh, I know some of the feedback from being out to your place. Mrs. Roddy, is that uh, you're interested in um, also in food safety and GAP certification. So that is coming too. We're putting that together mm -hmm. um, for you. And we also are putting together some wholesale buyers who are willing to meet us as farmers where we are. So that is is also in place. Some, some, big bo some of the big boys who understand, you know, that we don't currently have some of the resources and that there's certain barriers that are keeping us on the outside looking in. So we went and found them, partnered up with them, said, hey, let us show you how you can best help us as, mm -hmm. as people get in the game. So stay tuned. It's, it's being, we got phase one. We kicked phase one off mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago with the train the trainer and uh, come springtime, uh, maybe even before that, um, I, I we'll get back to you because I got you on the on speed dial and mm -hmm. uh, let you know because we want to lift you up as one of our models to show show folks what really can be done. So thank you for hanging in there with us. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Where is she located? Uh, McLennan County, which is closest to Waco. Okay, I'm familiar. I'm pretty close. Oh, okay, okay. How you doing, Miss Roddy? I'm good. Is that Uriah? <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Yes. How you doing? Okay. I'm good. Miss Roddy? Yes. <laughs> okay, I was making note. I was making note um, for future family networking. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Any more questions, uh, Ushe? Because I didn't want to assume we, I was the third one in line because someone may have come back in. We, we do have another person with a question. Um, Dara Monifa, I, you, uh, you have access to talk, please unmute your mic. Peace, greetings, family. This is uh, Dara. So I am so grateful that I just happened to bump into this online and went ahead and registered and having no idea who the heck you all are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh, you. And I'm, I'm gonna make it quick because it needs to be something that's followed up offline. Uh, but just in case it might be useful to anybody else who's listening too, um, as I put in the chat, I'm 
I'm trying to, I'm, I'm new in the funding related space when it comes to black farmers and basically being Robin Hoodettes and getting the money from the USDA and finding ways to get it to the black farmers. So I am doing all sorts of random grassroots research to find you all and mm. figure out how to share the easy options and as well as give support to the, the more complicated options. So um, your organization seems like one that's needs to be replicated. <laughs> First needs to be supported, of course, in whatever way that you all would know best that is, but definitely needs to be replicated throughout the South. And in the program that I work in, I, I go between the Virgin Islands, which is home for me, and Puerto Rico, and then the whole Southern, Southeastern US. So I, I, I'm gonna keep listening in, but um, I wanted to ask you all some questions related to your capacity and I don't fully understand all that you all do, but it seems like a wide scope and it seems um, that like there's a level of depth and multi-layers. Uh, so there, there are some opportunities that will be coming up and I just really wanna be able to reach out to you all and, and others to you know share the information, share the wealth. Um, a lot of it's free. So it's, it's not the norm of what we know about. So I just wanna thank you all for hosting this and I'm going to keep uh, listening in, uh, but I am really looking for ways to reach more of us that are doing this work. And as the young people say, helping to make farming sexy <laughs> and all of the above so we can shift and reverse that the nonsense that has been inbred to us so that we can get back to doing what we originally did for other for ourselves first and then for them and now we need to get back to doing it for ourselves and everyone else so just just thank you all i appreciate the work that you're doing thank you so much and uh be sure to reach out don't be a stranger let's chat sure <laughs> uh we have no other questions arlena so feel free to okay um I initially raised my hand to say something about the hoop gardening, a uh, very quick technique, but I'm going to add something, then I'm going to come back to that. Um, uh, again, I, I hate to be on the soapbox, but right now, all of the gentlemen and myself included are, I am plugging into them and we are working on making sure that we provide those resources to you. And it's going to come in all the levels that you are. So stay connected because we are actively working on meeting you where you are. So if you're small in the apartment balcony, definitely give you reference on that. And then in between, and then lastly, a lot of you are really um, producing on a large scale and you're ready to make money. Well, it's coming to you. And so I, I, hinted, I hinted to that before. These are the people. These are, in fact, the people that I will be scheduling and that's that's on my calendar right now tomorrow i have to make these appointments reach out and we're going to collect that information for you so that you can know but we're not going to just shove it down your throat we're going to take it in those steps to make sure that you're where you need to be so i've heard gap that's going to be included food safety preservation of the produce once you grow it because that's an issue of losing it what to do with the produce um, based on your family, your desire, as opposed to just throwing it out there. So another partner, Mr. Schaefer, he says that, you know, create a plan. So you can expect that. Um, this is our coming together and talking, but there's going to be uh, a more structured setting for you to learn these things. And that is, um, we're, we're working on that. So some of them on here are aware, but some of you aren't. So if you don't know the organization, you can expect that coming here very soon. It's it's in the works and the process is already there. And at the same time, we're train we're in train the trainer. So we're also making sure that we're positioned to where we know how to properly break down this information and give it to you. You know, not up here like, oh man, like I got 120 acres. No, um, it will be where you are. So we're gonna first meet you, do that one-on-one -on -one and find out what your aspirations are, what your needs, your hindrances. Those are actually the questions that I ask. 
when we meet up. And then um, um, I must say this too, and Phil said it, we aren't all the grand puba master, <laughs> the, the master chi <laughs> goddess of agriculture. There are some errors and flaws in it. It's, it's, it's a delicate, but then it's not delicate. It's not that hard. So we are using each other to bring these things. So I have my areas of expertise and Uriah has a major slew of errors. So we will be pulling those things together for you. <laughs> she said, sign me up coach, right? I'm on the bench. I'm ready. I'm ready. So yeah, that's me actually. I'm I'm, I'm playing uh specials teams. <laughs> um, so <laughs> we're in the game. We're actually on the clock. So you can expect that. But I was going to real quickly say that um I have to grow. And so no matter where I am, I am going to grow. So if I'm in a small apartment, if I'm in a house, which I am now three bedroom house, and then I have access to a large amount of land, but I will grow in that spot. So I have creatively um, and used the limited resources that I have. I have purchased the piping, the insulation piping from Home Depot for a dollar and some change. It's flexible and it's about eight and a half feet tall. And I'm walking through Home Depot with this stuff and it's hanging out of my window. And I go home and I stick those dollars, those dollar rods in the ground. And I bend that sucker over and I hoop it over and I take a string and I tie my cucumber vine and I tie my melon vine and I have pantyhose holding my, my watermelon vine. So you don't necessarily have to break the bank. <laughs> um, um, I have learned some things though about forcing so much growing in one small space. And I'll tell that funny story another day, uh, mystery melons, but <laughs> But uh, uh -huh. it is conceivable. So that's some of the resources we're going to learn is you don't have to break the bank. But when it comes to funding and money, that will be something that we will all um, that will also be part of the process of the education that we'll be sharing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Good stuff. Well, I think we are we at time, Uche. We we are at time, you know. The, the chat room is is very very active yeah. right now. Everyone is communicating. Um, there is one question someone did ask about. Um, they want to know if there you we have any resources or contacts for insurance. Um, I don't know. Well, if you... that's, a, that's a good segue. That will actually be our next upcoming knowledge form. Um. Sure. In the meantime, you have the email if there's something you need to know now. Um, but in, but we will have our special guest, Joshua Coleman, on. Uh, he's our go-to guy. I mean, he's like a walking encyclopedia when it comes to any kind of ag-related insurance. If anybody who's talked to him knows, knows I know what I'm talking about here. So, And that's what we're doing in these knowledge forms is just bringing, you, you know, Folks like Uriah, you know, who who know what they're talking about and, and walk their talk. So um, stay tuned for that. But yeah, feel free and, and hit us at the admin at tsfrcbo.org. Uh, if you have any questions in the meantime, and uh, if you haven't, like Arlena mentioned, please go to the website, get in that newsletter. That's where, you know, that's our, our hub. That's where we get the information out to you. We do a, a newsletter every Tuesday and that's just about, you know, stuff we feel like you need to know, whether it's an upcoming event or something in the news or some tips, whatever that might be. Um, it's in that newsletter and we're giving it to you each week and we don't try to overload you. We're giving you about four, four of the top things that we, we think you need to know because we know how you got so much stuff coming at you. We don't want to bombard you or spam you, but uh, encourage you to check that out. Um, I feel like there was something else I was supposed to say before we. Well, I was, yeah, I was going to announce um, the next Knowledge Forum, which will be about insurance, will be on February 27th at 6 p.m. So everyone just mark your calendars, the next Knowledge Forum, and it'll be Joshua Coleman, like um, Mr. Ross said. So if you have any questions regarding insurance, this is your man to talk to. 
and he will be definitely be able to assist you. Um, I do believe some folks have asked if they, if they can get you know, this in PDF or recording, this has been recorded, it's going to be posted on YouTube, as well as a blog post will go out alongside this. So all the information you're sending in the chat, chat. everything else is going to be shared with all our attendees um, on our website very soon. So please just stay tuned. And like Phil said, just sign up for the newsletter, because as soon as they get on the website, the best way for you to get stay informed, except you're checking our website every day, which is fine. I love that. Um, but you will get an email every Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. with all the information you need. So just stay tuned. All right. So that's it. Last but not least, if you know somebody who needs to be on here, be a good neighbor. Tell them about this. You know, give them that website, have them sign up so they can be in tune. Um, this is this is for us by us, y'all. So let let's keep it going, fam. Uh, so until next time, be the exception. All right. Bye. Have a great evening. See you next time.